Okay, good afternoon. We have our um, special, special, most special guests that I could have. I love Ann Mara and David and Karen, and um, I love all of them. But I'm a little partial to these two over here. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, so we're going to in, introduce them, okay? And because, um, I mean, and I think you all know, and Rose, I have told you that you are famous worldwide. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's because I was on the way of three news down on the other side of, of Google. With, I was on the week three news with with, with um one of the the, the directors, um Miss Julie, um she is talking about because a warrior walk that we are having for Dancing of the Wolf, and the Fuki Dog Crew is performing there, and um. The reason why I'm famous on there because just my parents can't ever stop um, watching that that video of me <laughs> because I am their their um the girl I'm I'm always my I'm always a dad's girl mm-hmm. because both of my parents are great parents I just love them so much because both of them did so much done so much for me including my dad. Because my dad is the most best father ever that I could ever have. Thank you, Father. And so um, Rose actually spoke at our conference in 2015 in Danville, Kentucky. And so now we're here seven years later in 2022 in Frankfort, Kentucky. And you are 21 years old now. Yes, I am 21. I just had a 21st birthday. I had a birthday weekend with my family. All my uh, family came except for, for April because she has work, but that's okay. I had the rest of my family. And it was the best birthday weekend I could ever have. I tried a few alcohol drinks to do my brother's <laughs> care for me. But I don't I do, but it's okay. I'm 21 now, so I'm very happy. So thank you. You know what? I tried my first at my 18th birthday, Rose, when and back then 18 was legal. Well, legal. I try four. <laughs> Well, you are 21. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, and the Roses program is named after Rose. You all heard about her research um, that we did, and you have been doing Equipping Minds. Yes. Wow. For over 10 years off and on. Yeah, I've been doing brain training with Miss Carol, and it's a great day for me to do that with Miss Carol because... She had me um, teach me all the different kinds of games that have presence, link, um, dots, and also set and some other games. I just love doing those um, um, with her because she taught me so much in, in brain training. So thank you. No, thank you, Rose. And our next guest is Addison Page. And Addison, you can you can talk to everybody too. Um, so you just turned sixteen, mm-hmm. and tell everybody what you love doing for fun. Like I can say for for fun, I I can I can do play my my drums mm-hmm you do play your drums and you are in the band yes right and you've been doing equipping minds two years a yeah, little over two years, little over two yeah. years. 
And um, you and your mom did an amazing slideshow that we want to look at. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, if we want to, who wants to talk through it? Addison, Amy, y'all want to do this together? You want to do it together? Our Google Slides. Your Google so, Slides? Yeah. I've got Google here. Slides Pro, aren't you? Yes, I am. So I'm going to I'm going to share our screen. I've done that project back at my high school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, you did Google Slides too? Um, actually, um, it's a um Google Slides. We've done PowerPoint and Microsoft Word in my um computer in my career management class, and it's a it's a really great class. Oh, so, yeah. Maybe. Okay, Addison and Amy, who wants to tell us about this? Do you want me to? Yes. Do you want mom to start? <laughs> you okay. Want me to come over there. Yeah. All right, I'll come over here. And Amy, if you want to come over between us, I'm going to yep, put I'm the mic that. right up to you. Because I, I just have to brag on Amy for a minute. And. Sorry, Um, Amy has taken Equipping Minds and made connections to pretty much about everything Addison does, okay? And as you see the title, Equipping Minds in the Arts and Academics, and she has bridged in just phenomenal ways. And um, so I'm so excited for us to show this to you today. So we're going to go in and Amy, go ahead and share with us. All right. Can you do full screen? I can. So I can actually read it. (laughs) (laughs) Downsides of getting older. All right. So um, one of the things, Addison, you heard Addison say that he does band. Uh, He's involved in the marching band, just regular high school marching band and plays. What do you play? Drums, that's right. So, but not just drums, percussion. So, oh, what are some of the, what are some of the other instruments you play? Like, you can look that way. Uh, <laughs> like drums. Mm-hmm. You've got a drum set. What do you play at school? Bass drum. Ba- bass drum. Mm-hmm. What else? Vibraphone. Vibraphone. What else? And when did you play at the big round ones in the concert? Oh, timpani. Timpani. Oh, the yeah. timpani. Timpani cymbals, bass drum, snare drum. So all all different kind, all different um, percussion instruments. Um, so when we were when we kind of embarked on this journey, we were trying to figure out. What is an, uh, the best way for him to learn how to read music? And um, there's obviously, there, sometimes there's a, a, the delay between what you see on the page, getting it to the brain, processing it, and then the action taking place. Uh, we've been doing Equipping Minds for, I guess, about a year. Mm-hmm. I guess about a year when we, when we started this. And when last year, when we started talking about marching band, I thought, okay, we really need to kind of step this up. You know, um, he memorizes things pretty well. um, And he already knew all of the, uh, I assume you guys have already covered like the colors. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, I just didn't want to talk and make no sense. (laughs) (laughs) So the corresponding colors, numbers, letters, you can take that and you can adapt that to music because music is letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So as you can see, we use green for A. Look, what is, what's B? Blue. Blue. And then can you read the rest? Red three. Red is three. And what letter? What letter is red? C, yeah. mm-hmm. and then D is yellow, E is black, F is orange, and G is brown. So we just use those 
and you can go on to the next slide. Okay. And well, actually, I guess I can tell you one of the things we did at home is we have a, his older brother plays piano and we have a piano at home. And so what I did is I took painters, Gabe, that's right. I took painters tape um, of all those colors and then marked the keys on, on the piano. Um, right here, we have Addison is learning to write the note name and identify where it is on the staff. So I have a little whiteboard that's music staff and um, we practice, we, we use our, what do we use? Kai cubes. Color cubes, that's mm -hmm. right. And we do it all different ways. Like um, I'll usually start with kind of a legend up there at the top that kind of reminds him of where the note is on the staff and what the corresponding color is. And then on the next two staffs, I, I will, I may draw a note somewhere and then he has to identify it pick the right color and then write the correct note name. And then you can change that out, you know, by um, you can put cubes out and have the student name the note. You can write the note on the staff, which is our goal. Our goal is for him to be able to see the note on the staff, know what note that is and then play it. And that um, in percussion that comes most common with timpani and bells, you know, bass drum, not so much, um, but, but, uh, but he, he has to work on rhythm for that as well. So mm -hmm. we were just finding, trying to find a way to, to make this um, a, a cohesive learning experience that was easy for him and something that he was already familiar with. So we, uh, that's what we did. So we moved on from that and you can go to the next one, which I think we sort of touched on. Um, so this is just these pictures are really just to give you a little bit of insight and just a picture and view into what, what it is he does. He just does day-to-day -day life like every other 16-year-old. Um, he's in, what grade are you in? Eighth. Eighth grade. He's in eighth grade, but he plays, uh, he played with the high school marching band this year. And so he goes out on the field, does the comp he did marching band competitions this year for the mm -hmm. first time. Um, so it's been a really great uh, opportunity for him. And then on the other picture, that's just playing around at home. He has a drum set and he has a teacher who comes over every couple of weeks and works with him one-on-one. -on -one. Who is that? Miss Turner. Well, Miss Turner helps you with percussion at school. Who comes over and helps um, on your drum set? Who came over last night? Jack. No, at home. Who teaches you drums? Mr. Loon. Oh, yes, those are all people at school, but who, who comes over and teaches you at home? Oh, okay, I do. Cody, that's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can move on. That was just touching base on what we've already covered. Uh, so one of the things that, yes, one of the things that I worked on with um, Miss Turner, his percussion teacher at school, was color coding his music. And so for, as you can see, um, this is bass clef. So that's a little bit more challenging. If you know anything about music, there's treble clef and bass clef. So having to learn how to read music on two different, with two different clefs. Um, so we just took, this was his first piece up there at the top that he did in timpani and both, um, Ms. Turner at school and his private teacher uh, have kind of come alongside and are adopting the same philosophy and really kind of diving in. And, and as a matter of fact, so much so that Ms. Turner actually just wrote her graduate paper on this, this very thing. Did she end she up did. doing it? Yeah. She, she said he was her inspiration for how can you use a color coding system to teach students how to read music. And, um, so the goal is, you know, while Addison may be a little bit of a, a trailblazer, the goal is for those things to, to be implemented among any student. And that's one of the things that I just have to do my own personal plug that I love about Equipping Minds is that it's for anybody. It's not just for students with learning difficulties. Really, there's no downside to it, like literally no downside. <laughs> Um, so what we did is we just color coded his music and uh, we work on writing out the rhythms and then it's kind of hard to see down here, but this is a piece that he is working on right hand on what? I'm still standing. I'm still standing. And what are you playing? What, what are you playing that on? Piano. Piano. That's right. So working on working on that on piano. So all that percussion and the piano. Yes. And um, very do like, impressive. Do you like music? 
Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Do I do too. <laughs> Music's yeah, awesome. and Rose is a dancer. <gasps> That's I am. awesome. I've been wow. dancing for 15 years when I was five. That's awesome. And I tried out at a dance studio, but I didn't, didn't like it, so that made my mom really upset. But when I am 21 now, I pick up dancing back up. I get back up again. I dance to my heart's content. And I just, dancing is a very big part of me. So that's, I, that's yeah. awesome. You have a brother who dances, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. That Gabe. Gabe, that's right. So here is a little example of how we're using this. That's right. That is you. That's right. <laughs> how we're using this at home and with his um, private instructor for uh, the drum set. So what we did is, again, we took the painter's tape and I just got the colors that correspond to equipping minds and literally tore off a piece and put it on each piece of his drum set. So, Addison, tell me what on your drum set at home, what is green? Hi hat. Hi hat. What is black? Kick drum. Kick drum. What is red? Tom. Yellow? Tom. The yeah, floor tom, that's right. And, floor tom. Yep. And blue. Snare. Snare. Right. So then what we did is mm-hmm. I was thinking, okay, so how do we how do we bridge this gap? So what I did is I went on Amazon and I bought colored magnets. And so what Cody does is we he now knows which color magnet goes with which piece on his drum set. And so as they're working, Cody can put up, um, if you see like, you see green, blue is beat one, black is the and, green and blue is beat two. So one and two and three and four. And so what he had to learn then was, you wanna show them? Show them, you can do that, you show them the rhythm. Me? Yeah. Yes, you go for it. I can't do it, Addison. <laughs> you show Miss Carol how to play drums. Ask, you know what? We should have brought your drumsticks in. Um, so when you're doing this rhythm up here, Addison, with green and blue and black, what are you doing? What does that look like with your hands? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can I see you do that? Just pretend your drum set's right here. You I, do air drums, just mm-hmm. like you do in the car. Oh, yeah. Do air drums. Sure. Go for it. Okay. And then what, what are you doing with your foot? Kick drum. That's right. So he knows that beat one is going to be the cymbal and the snare simultaneously. And the and is going to be the kick drum. So that's the foot. So you have a hundred thousand things going on here and they're all amazing because he's using, he's got the visual aspect. So you've got that input. Mm -hmm. He's um, working on rhythm and having to listen. He's crossing midline for those of you that are familiar with that, Mm -hmm. that term, um, which is a big deal. Um, We started off playing drums about kind of like this. (laughs) And now he's like, animal from the Muppets, you know, he's all over the place. (laughs) Um, And so it got to the point where now Cody can throw the magnets up on the board and just say, okay, Addison, play that. And nine times out of 10, he's got that. And, you know, obviously working on rhythm, keeping it smooth, making sure the tempo, you know, working on tempo, all those things. But um, that's just a way that, has and it, he has grown tremendously. Like even his percussion teacher at school will tell you, the change in him musically from when he started, Miss Turner. That's right. From when he started to which was only in sixth grade, and he's mm-hmm. he's in eighth grade, and half of sixth grade was COVID, <laughs> so he wasn't yeah. even at school. Um, so we kind of lost some time there, but that's okay. But in in the last year and a half, really, that he's been doing drums with. Um, Cody and using this system, she said his ability has just blossomed and so much so that in the concert just a a couple months ago, he played timpani um, for the first time, which involves uh, in concert band. And if you know anything about concert band, like the drums, that's what keeps the beat for the whole band. So he was back there and he was playing by himself 
you know, and keeping the beat and which is, I, I mean, it's a big deal. <laughs> it is a big <laughs> you know? deal. Well, and he's at the Christian Academy of Louisville, mm-hmm. which if you're from the area, it's our, probably one of our largest, mm-hmm. if not the largest Christian Academy. I, know, I would say that. Yeah. And they happen to have a program for children who happen to have Down syndrome. What's it? What's that called? Yes, but what's your, your, your friends at school? Um, what program at Cal starts with P? Providence, yeah, the Providence, Providence the Providence program. And so it's not a school for kids. No, he's, you know, just, he's it's, just being mainstreamed through um, regular Christian Academy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he attends probably 80% of his day is spent in regular classrooms um, with other eighth graders. So, and the fact that he got to participate in marching band with basically high all high school students, minus a couple of them, was a great experience. Mm-hmm. And you grew a lot and learned a lot too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So you can move on. If you okay. Want. Let's see. Let me come down. There we go. One more. All right. So the next thing that we did is, yes, the next thing we did is that um, Addison has been involved off and on in musical theater, Um, whether that is at school or through the Oldham County Arts School System or wherever. um, We just kind of, our family just does that kind of, that's just part of our our, our DNA, I guess, our family, <laughs> our family identity. Um, and so he has, there's a, we have a young man who teaches him dance. He comes over once a week and does tap and jazz. And so we got to talk, okay, well, yeah. this is working in music. Can I take this and apply it in dance as well? Daniel, that's right. You like Daniel, don't you? Yeah. Um, and so what we did is I asked Daniel, okay, Daniel, give me the, the, the first say eight or nine steps that you would teach and really break it down to the very, very simple basics. And then when you put those steps together, they create a a new step. And so, um, if, if then we did the same thing with magnets, there's a, you can see, we have a list, like one is step two is stomp. Three is dig, they're all color coded. Um, And then Daniel does the same thing. So up here, you can see the blue, the white, the green, the orange and green together and the green, put all of that together, that's a time step, which is a step in tap. Same thing with the paradiddles over here. And then if you go to the next screen, there is a demonstration. It's about a minute and a half, I think. Yeah, no, no, no. But it was, it was neat. So I'm going to go. You can click. Can I? Yeah, you can play that. And when you do it, it should give you a full screen option. Yeah, it's just me getting back to it. Oh, here we go. Jumping back on our list a little bit. What is red? Mm-hmm. And then brown, which we just did in our shuffle, is uh huh. And then green, which we've been doing the whole time, is mm-hmm. and our black, which we were doing earlier with our taps and our yeah. Yeah. So putting those four things together, we have a dig, a stank, a step, a heel, and that is called in its totality a Paradiddle, right? Right. Yeah. So we're gonna do dig, sing, sing. Cool. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Let's give us another song. Ooh. Here we go. Yeah. So the rhythm will be dig, sing, sing, five, six, right foot. Here we go. Sing, God. Nice. Couple more. Good. Nice. Hey, that was awesome. 
Awesome, Madison. You are Mr. Paradiddle. Wow. Yeah. 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 And I will say one thing that I have loved is with the school, with um, his teachers, whether it's at home or dance, they have all been open Mm -hmm. to taking the the system, the color system. So y'all are probably like, please don't add anything to the end back. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But Addison could probably look at the colored arrows and we could even say the, the dance steps or the drum positions, movements that go with each of those. Um, so as we're looking at those, okay, so we're going to keep coming down on these. Okay, y'all, you've got to take this in. We learned this one day with playing with the cubes and I happened to have two cubes together. It's just one of those things that we're kind of playing with. And Addison looked at it and he was like, oh, 21. Okay. It's just what he said. And of course, Amy and I are like, wait a minute. And so I grab another one. And he looked at it and he was like, oh, 921. Mm -hmm. And then he knew that this was the hundreds place, tens place and ones place. And that had been incredibly challenging Mm -hmm. to teach. Right. Just math in general. Now, Addison, what's your favorite subject? Math. Yeah. So Addison likes math, which is one of the reasons that I really explore this every way I can, because if it's something he enjoys, then he's always more cooperative. <laughs> but um, finding new ways really to just incorporate that. And mm-hmm. so we bro- we took a we have a little whiteboard that we keep with all of our equipping mind stuff. And so we start working on place value. And so I would start with one cube in the ones column and he would tell me what number that was. I'd say, what number do you see? And he would tell me what number. And then I'd add another one. And then he would put those two numbers together and say 29 or whatever, whatever the cubes were. And then so once we kind of got the hang of that and I thought, okay, he's making these connections on his own. What else can I do with that? So then we started moving into um, fractions and working on um, just one fourth, one third. And really when you have one through nine, you can do anything. You can do any combination, which is great. Right. Um, and so then we just started doing, I would, I would write, I'd put a cube over a cube and, and then draw like the, the rectangles in the box and, and ask him, okay, what fraction do you see? And he would have to write what that fraction was and then have to shade the corresponding um, number of rectangles in the box. Okay. So, did I do that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then um, the, the, well, the other one I was going to say about okay. that, Carol was adding and subtracting. Mm. Um, and this is, this was super exciting because this goes beyond just mental math computation. It's abstract thinking mm-hmm. because you're taking, you're no longer looking at just a number and having to add or subtract that number. You're looking at a color. And so in his mind, he has to say, okay, I know that red is three. So this, I'm, what I see is a three, even though what he's looking at is a red cube. Um, and so we just started playing with that. And we do this every week. This is just something we kind of build in to, to what we're doing. And I've shared these things with um, with school and, you know, they're picking up on some of these things and, and they're starting and they're incorporating that into what he's doing at school as well. And I think it just really reinforces and it's a great way to learn, especially when you have somebody who's a, a very strong visual learner. Um, you can move on. Okay. But the abstract thinking thing, that was huge. When Carol and I kind of saw that he was making this connection, it was like, oh my goodness, there's this le- this higher mm-hmm. level of thought that's happening that we wanted to really just kind of mm-hmm. explore and, and find out more ways to, to go about that. Um, you can use this in every single subject. I don't care what the subject is. You can find a way. You can find a way to use it. Um, just about a week or two, a couple of weeks ago, we just started um, parts of speech, 
And so we said, I said, okay, so let's use the symbols. Um, we've done color, we did color and I thought, well, let's try something different, something, because often you have to identify, you know, a noun, a verb, an adjective, et cetera, and mark that somehow in, on your paper. So we started with circle the noun, X the verb, box the <laughs> adjective, you know? And so now we have that visual part that, it, that helps him with identifying parts of speech. So um, that, so that's what we did on that one. And then sequencing, that's another thing that they do a lot of is, you know, what happened first, what happens next, et cetera. Well, same thing when we have, when he has a passage to read, um, I'll have him read through the passage and then we'll get markers, highlighters, colored pens, whatever we happen to have sitting around. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. and we'll read it and we'll read it <laughs> sentence by sentence and we'll say, okay, what's the first thing that happened? Well, as he just read that, he can pick up his green crayon and highlight that. Mm -hmm. And then when he goes back and to review that passage, or when you have to put them in order, um, he can have a visual that says, oh, this is what happened first. Mm -hmm. Blue is what happened second. Red is what happened third, et cetera. And so it was kind of like this light bulb went on. And, and so I started, ex light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> we started exploring other ways that we could use this. And the, you can go, the next slide is actually really cool. Um, this year, then, Addison, what, do you remember what this is? It's history. History, that's exactly right. Do you remember what, you're, what you were learning? Preamble. Mm -hmm, the preamble to the Constitution. And so um, one of his teachers at school took the same concept, the color coding concept. And as the students were learning at the preamble to the Constitution, he would start with the words that it was a fill in the blank. So he would start with the words color coded. And so he would then learn the first word was green. And so then he would read through this whole thing. But what's really exciting is the one on the right, that was a, a quiz, no color coding. He, so mm -hmm. he then had to take what he'd learned with the color coding and apply it in just regular pencil, regular blank. And he had a word bank, but nothing was color coded on the quiz. And so it was exciting to see that, oh my goodness, this whole color coding system, it transferred mm -hmm. to, you know, just doing that, doing that on a regular quiz, like the rest of the students in the class. So I, I feel like Equipping Minds is this amazing opportunity. It's this amazing program in which not only does it benefit everybody who does it cognitively, but it also can really help bridge the gap, even in a, in a school setting, in a home setting, anywhere where they're with other kids too, because it's something that, that they can do with anybody. And this has been something that while his coursework is modified, he's still learning the same concepts. He's still learning the same things as, as the other eighth graders in his class. And so this is a way to kind of help that, you know, help him mm -hmm. stay, I guess, um, on track as far as that goes. So I think that was really exciting. Um, these are just a couple things like this one we did addition. I took the quitch. Um, addition, subtraction, and um, <laughs> equal signs. And, and that blink, and I obviously recognize that's blink. And we did color is king. So then he has to look at that and say, okay, if color is king, I'm not looking at three, the number three, I'm really seeing the number two. Um, and so we have two plus what's brown? Seven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what does that equal? Nine. That's Nine. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then he has to he has to use the, the correct um, color and be able to. And then I have him repeat the equation back. So then when he sees it, but he has to say two plus seven equals nine, even though he doesn't see two, seven or nine anywhere. <laughs> so um, now just for a second. Everybody, I understand right now. You're like, what the <laughs> heck did she just say? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to take just a second and talk through this. Okay. Now, now, if we had said, and we'll just pick this up and 
if we had said, what is one plus three, you would have been okay with the answer being four, right? Because you would look at this and that would make sense to you, okay? But what if I tell you that actually Okay, that this is one because it's green, okay? Plus three because it's red equals four because it's yellow, okay? Wow, yes. And so um, that's where I haven't taught you that yet because I didn't feel oh, like sorry. you were ready for it. No, 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 no. I was, I was waiting for you all to get here to, to bring this up because Addison and I have been doing this, taking both decks of blink cards. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we'll mix the blink cards, mm -hmm. right? So Addison, just for fun, here we go. What's my number? Seven. Seven. What's my color? Green. Green. What's my animal? Snake. A snake. Um, who's my president? James Monroe. Yes, James Monroe. Addison. What's my, let's see, what's my symbol? What symbol do I draw? Think about your animals. We draw symbols on the animals, right? And on the numbers. And on the numbers. So. Well, if it's sure. yellow. Oh. Line under. Yes, line under. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we just took these and said seven green snakes, James Monroe, line under. Now, Addison is the one who came up with the idea that it would be fun or funny. <laughs> <laughs> to play around with the order. And we might say, um, who's our president? James Monroe. James Monroe saw seven, seven green, green snakes. snakes. And we could say under Coyle. coiled around, coiled, coiled around. around, yeah. Um, under, you know, under the desk coiled around. And so we like to take that and make a silly sentence on that. Okay. So some of them in the room, Monica's like this right now. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. My head is trying to absorb this. Okay. And so, um, but I wanted you all to get to see that, but you see how we also bridge that to quitch. And that's where we could even do plus one on this. Okay. But we're not saying one plus one. We're saying, so if we did plus one. And color is king. And color is king. What's this plus one? What do you see? So what number do you see? What number do you see? Nine. Okay. Plus one. Ten. Yes. Uh-huh. And so you can do that as well. So we have been, you know, playing around with that. Amy is so creative. They have done spot it where they're racing around the house. They've used Twister to do the colors and parts of your body go with the different colors. And um, 
so, so many creative ways that they are bridging it. And that's, you know, we've got a physical education teacher in here. And um, yes, there's so many. She's got, she, she's the only one who grabbed her pen and paper right now. <laughs> she's like, wait a minute, wait a minute here. Um, so seeing all that. Hey, so what we're going to do right now, we're going to play some games with Addison and Rose, okay? But one of the things we have not done yet, because I wanted them to help teach this, and that is our presidents of the United States, and they both love the presidents. You may have remember me telling you, if I did tell you, I told someone recently, Rose learned the presidents very quickly. And so much so that I texted her mom and said, Hey, did, did Rose already know the presidents? And she said, no, what are you talking about? And then Rose and I went down to the principal's office. I don't know if you remember this, but I took you down there and I said, oh, have you all been teaching the students, the presidents? And she said, well, no. And I said, well, Rose knows the first 20. <laughs> and she was like, what? And I'm like, okay, Rose, let's go ahead and tell her. And she almost went out of her chair at that point. She was amazed. And I was amazed with that. And so they were a favorite of both. So they could rattle these off. You all cannot. We know that. Okay, we know that. You can't do it yet, right? We've talked about that. But in our first picture that we have, okay, what do we see? Oh, Washington. Yes, it's for Washington. Because what do we see in our picture? It's a washing, it's a washing machine filled with clothes. Absolutely. The washing machine with clothes. <laughs> Miss Carol, do you not see what is in front of you? Yeah, it is. And how many clothes do we have? Ten. A ton. Okay. So we have to wash a ton. So wash a ton for? Washington. Washington. And so Addison, Rose, something from this picture is going to be in the next picture. And that's why I love this book. What in this picture is going to show up in our next picture? Um, what are we going to see in the next Adams. picture? Adams. And where are the Adams? It's just easy. Adams is just like science. Adams, like been solved in a science experiment or something. Right. And where did they put the Adams in our picture? In the, what from this picture what's in the next is picture? in the next picture? Washer. The washer. No. Absolutely. Yeah. So no. here's so the here's our washing machine with our atoms that Rose learned about in science. And so the atoms are for John Adams. Yeah, and um it, it's just like molecules from science that I learned back in my high school. You learned about that too. Okay. So that's how, once again, that bridges to science. You see that? Okay. Now, what from this picture will be in the next picture? Madison. It's coming up. Madison is coming. But what in this picture? We have this picture. Oh. What's in the next A picture? What's the same. What's in this picture will be in the next picture? Oh, um, Jefferson. Yes. And what are we going to see in that picture? What's in the next chef's picture? son? Yes, so you'll see the chef's son in this picture. What's the same thing from this picture that you see in the next one? The Adams, Adams come over to the next picture, and then, as Rose said, we're going to have the chef with his son, and we would talk through this, and we can ask the question: How does the little boy look like he feels? Happy. Yeah. And what is he wearing? A chef hat. A chef's hat. <laughs> nice. And what else is he wearing? A green shirt. shirt and a yellow shorts. Yes. Very good. And so if we turn the page, and we will, 
What are we going to see on the next page? My woe. Almost. He's coming up number five. This is number three. Mm. It's who you were thinking about earlier. Madison. Madison. And what from this picture's in the next picture? Mad son. The mad son comes in. And what else that was in this picture is in the next picture? What's What's who's looking at the mad son in the next picture? Who do you see looking at the mad son in the next picture? Mm, um, In this picture, what's the same thing from this picture? The next picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the chef's son, right? There he is again. Is looking. And how does he look like he feels now? Um, uh, um, Afraid. Afraid. Yeah, he looks afraid. And the sun is mad. And the sun is mad. So we've got some emotions we can identify and talk about there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the one you were thinking about. Who are we going to see next? Um, um, A moe. Yes. And what's going to happen in the picture? He's going to a cave of, of, um, of money. Okay. So he is money and he's rowing. That boat and trying to get away. Yeah, so the sun came into this picture. Now, I want us to talk about just a minute. What color is the sun's mouth? Black. And this is the fifth president. Okay. And it was one of our parents who picked up on this. Let's, we're going to go backwards for a minute. And the sun is what color? Um, yeah. Yellow. And he's the fourth president. You know, I just can't make this stuff up. You know how I told you that God kept showing the connections, kept showing the connections, kept showing the connections. So here, what color is our little boy's hair? It's red. And Thomas Jefferson actually had red hair. And red is for number three. And then in number two, when we look at that for our water, what color is water? Blue, blue for two. And then what color do we see for our green, for our grass is green for number one. Now, since they're here, we're also just going to take a look and we're going to say this Our money is going to row into a dam. And you may notice um, what color is where are our coins? Kind of gold or orange. And six is going to be orange. And who's running into the dam? Money. Um, Adam. Yes. And if we say his full name. John Quincy Adams? Yes, John Quincy Adams is number six. And so then when we turn the page, who do we see? Oh, and you yes. Jackson. Yes, because the Jacks are going over the dam and the dam is brown. And seven is going to be brown. Now, it was already brown, okay? <laughs> and then we saw these connections. Okay, who are we going to see after Andrew Jackson? Van Buren? Yes, Martin Van Buren. And what's our picture we're going to see? A car. Van. The van. The car is a van. Van. And and what else do we see? What's on top of it? Top of the van. Hmm. Think about what you see. Mm-hmm. What's on top of the van? I, I know this. I'm trying to think. What do you see on top of the van? I don't know. <laughs> okay. So it's something you would put clothes in. Uh, a dryer? 
What do you see? Oh, a drawer. Yeah, Good yeah. Chest of drawers, a dresser. Another name for that is a. The French word is bureau, bureau. in French. So for the Van Buren, and what do you see on the tires? Oh, Jackson. Yeah, Jackson. The Jacks from Jackson got to come over. And what color are our clouds? White. 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 Eight is going to be white. Okay. Four gray. Four gray. <laughs> yes. To clarify that, gray is white. So when we see that with our colored words, when we see it on our blink, blink cards, cards, because they can't make just a white blink card, you know, and on the number page, you see where we outline it when it's white. But yeah, so you are correct, Addison, on that. And then number nine, we have Harrison. Harrison. And while there is nothing purple in this picture, <laughs> nine is purple. And I don't know, maybe this is a purplish color van under there. But um, but looking at that, yes. So y'all want to say some of your, this is your book. Yes. So who are our presidents? Let's go ahead and say them. For everybody, who do we have? Number one. Oh, Washington. 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 Number two. Adams. And we'll say his first name, John Adams. Go ahead. Yeah, number three. Um, Jefferson. Jefferson. Yes, so we have Thomas Jefferson. Number four. Madison. 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 Number five. Um, Monroe. James Monroe. Number six. John, Adams. John Quincy Adams. Number seven. Jackson. And Jackson. Jackson. Number eight, Van Buren. Martin Van Buren. Yes, Martin Van Buren. And, and number nine, Harrison. Yes, William Henry Harrison. And we have a school that actually takes their presidents and will say, what would um, John Adams plus James Madison equal? Yes, yeah, John, John Quincy Adams, because two plus four equals six. Okay, so you are visualizing that and playing with that. So we're now going to play a game of tic-tac-toe with three people. And Rose and Addison and myself are going to play. And okay, thank you. And yes. Addison, what color would you like to be? Rose has already chosen purple. I've no, I see pink. Pink. Yeah. I call this one purple. I think purple. And I chose blue. And what color would you like? Green. Green. That's what I was thinking. So say I've got some over there too. Oh, I've got it. A lot. So we showed you all how to play tic-tac-toe on two boards with two people, right? Well, we can also play with three people. And with this, we are going to get to go anywhere. So let me um, do this. I should have actually hit that before. My apologies. Okay, so we've got this here, and Amy, I don't know if it would help if you were Do you want me to hold that? holding it so it's over, kind of, so everybody can see, like right there. Well, they can see it there, so they should be good. Okay, okay. So, Rose, we'll let you go first. Where do you see yourself going? On which one? Um, well, I'm going to go with my lucky number. No, it will be the we. And who's your president? Jefferson. Yes. So, Addison, where do you see yourself going? Hmm. I will put my green key on number 18. This is as great. Okay, well, I see my blue cube on James K. Pope, number 11. 
Rose, where do you I see yourself? Put mine on number 15, Nephew Kenan. Okay, Addison, where do you see yourself going? Mm -hmm. I guess I put my green cube on, on number 14. Perfect. Perfect. Nicely done. But Addison, I'm watching what you're doing. And I see you on 18 and 14. So I'm going to have to see myself on number 10 to block you from getting three in a row. Right. And we're present. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Rose. Thank you, Rose. I see myself putting my blue cube on number 10, John Tyler. Well, I was blocking you on, on, on number 12. And that is Fillmore. Check that. No. Nope. No, no, no. Um, Taylor. There you go. Hey. You got blocked. I did get blocked. Nicely played. <laughs> Addison. Mm. What about I will put my green cube on number 17? Andrew Johnson. Okay. Nicely done on your strategy there, sir. Um, but I am going to go up because I'm after you and he knows that. So he is counting on me blocking Rose. So I see myself on number nine, William Henry Harrison to block Rose from getting three in a row. You could be Kim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think I'm going uh, to block Addison on 16. That's no. recording. <laughs> 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 hey Addison, your turn. <laughs> Better look carefully. I am. Say mom. <laughs> I guess I guess I put my green cube on number 15. <sighs> Man, come on to Brock, Miss Carol. Oh. <laughs> Did y'all see that? Did y'all see that? Yeah. I don't have to give these two any props to, <laughs> you know, imagine right now. They're, they know what to do. Okay. Oh. Um, you guys are pros. You know what? You're pros. I see myself on Martin Van Buren, number eight. Actually, I got I'm a pro on my presence. I am Black Miss Carol on seven and New Jackson. Mm. Think about I, that. Nicely done. Nice. Thank you. I guess I put my green cube. On number five, James Monroe to block Miss Carol again. Okay, nicely done. Now, I did not plan this. Nope. But, y'all, I see myself on number six, John Quincy <laughs> Adams. <laughs> For the win. Yeah. She had. How many ways did How many have? ways three. did I have? Three. three. I had three. So did not, I actually did not plan that. I just looked down and I was like, oh, yes. wait a minute. I know. But great game. You two did amazing. Amazing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, I didn't win. <laughs> but you both did amazing. Okay. Well so played. very well played. Thank you. Very well played. Excellent. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, I get eight applause from my own father. <laughs> he's, he. Dad. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you too. Okay, so um, 
that, you know, some key things that we wanted to show you now, Rose, it's up to you. Well, I have been doing this in my head with my parents. Okay. That is the actual tic-tac-toe. Okay. So, you ready? So, she can't... I'm actually going to, like, really block. And we're going to play against each other. Where do you see yourself going? On number eight. Oh, I you're... my ex on... Change my will. I'm not trying to. Oh, you don't have to say the president right now. Oh, okay. Okay. I just put my X on the eight. Okay. You see yourself on eight? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you see yourself on eight, I see myself on five. Um, I have to go to number two. Okay. I see myself on four. Oh, okay. Um, I'm put my X on the six to block you. Nicely played. I see myself on number seven. I put my X on the three. Fuck you again. Okay. I see myself on number nine to block you. Uh, well, <laughs> you want nine, so I. Yeah. My X on the seven. Um, we're already there. Well, no, we're not on seven, but I want you to stop and think about this move. Um, where I am and where you are. Well, you're on nine and I'm on three. You're on three. Yes, I'm on three. You're on nine. Mm -hmm. Where did you go first? My first one was at eight. And then where did I go first? Nine. Well, first. Oh, um, seven. You went on eight. I went on five. Oh, yeah, five, five. Then you went no, on two. Two. And then three. And then, um, and then I went on seven. I went on seven. You no, I went on four. Yeah. You went on six. I went on seven. You went on three. I blocked you on nine. Mm -hmm. So there's a spot nobody's been on. I'll put my X on the four. I'm there. Mm, uh, um. So if you see me on five and nine. Um. Do you want to look at it on the board? Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look. So let's start at oh. our first move. Wait, 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 wait. I got it. No, one. And what just happened? Tic tac toe. You got three in a row. Mm. Okay. So um, we're holding nine, nine things in our mind. You do realize that, right? Nine things. Great thinking. Thank you. Great thinking, Rose. Awesome. 
Um, and so being able to hold those. And so right when I set it down, you know, it was instant. Oh, it's the one. And she knew she had three in a row because she knew she was on three and two. And because sometimes I'd be my parents in it. So, yeah. And so she got, I think I told you all, she was able to do this as a fourth grader. Um, when we started doing it, this was something that came, um, you know, that ability to visualize with her numbers came in and, and we could play that. And so we love doing that. And I, I want to tell you all something. We did not rehearse or script anything we were doing today. Okay. Um, Rose and I haven't worked together for about maybe three or four years now. Okay. And so, um, you know, last week I said, hey, I want you to come. I want you to speak. And hey, how about some presidents? How about some tic-tac-toe in our mind? And she's like, sure. You know, and Addison and I just kind of, you know, this was all kind of spur of the moment because um, I heard from your mom and because conference was coming up. And then I approached Addison and they both said, hey, yeah, they'd love to come over. And um, so you also saw how we mediate. Okay how we're working with things and, um, and everything. I want to see if there are one, any questions for Addison or Rose or Amy or um, even Kurt, if we had him come up <laughs> as a dad, um, any questions? What's Addison's mom's um, okay, so Amy, the question uh, was, what is Amy's background? Uh, no, I'm a mom. I mean, that's that's my full time job. Um, we homeschooled. I have five boys. He's the youngest of five. And so when they were young, we homeschooled. So that's really my only real teaching experience. Um, my background really is more and um, I love the arts and I grew up in music and dance and things like that. And um, so my kids have always been involved in those things. And and I love creativity. So anything that is in that sort of creative sphere and the reality is you can you can use that anywhere. And so mm -hmm. when we would homeschool, I was always looking for ways what's a creative way to teach my kids and keep them engaged. Um, so we did a lot of like hands-on activities. And then um, when he moved into school, it was actually a little bit hard because I was like, I don't have to control over that anymore, <laughs> you know, but um, we've been really fortunate to work with people who are always open to things that I'm doing at home. And so while he goes to school full-time, we do, I do a lot. We do a lot at home just on our own. And so we just, kind of build these things in here and there over the last couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Rose's uh, mother is, is a physician assistant. I'm a, uh, was a scientist, but also military. Um, and then once I, uh, well, a lot with, after 9-11, all that, I spent a lot of time on active duty. But when I wasn't doing that, I also taught high school. I know there's some Berea people in here. I taught at Madison Southern. Uh, taught junior ROTC over there. And while we were there, uh, Rose was um, at Foley. So, so when we uh, worked with Rose, it was always a challenge for us because as you've noticed, Rose is, is, is quite literate, quite uh, well capable of expressing herself. Um, a lot of times what happens as soon as you see a Down syndrome uh, qualifier in there, they immediately want to put her in the lowest of low classes. Uh, so almost every school we were in, we had to, um, you know, really work for that MMD or higher, I say, but she was able to uh, basically go through schools in a hybrid system. By hybrid, I mean, so she's in public school the whole time. It, uh, she'd be in regular classes about half the day, and then she would be in uh, MMD or some type of study hall or some type of assistant class uh, the other half of the day. And uh, she did her high school down in North Carolina. She was able to graduate with a full diploma, not a certificate. Um, mm -hmm. So there's, and, and they mentioned to say, uh, 
there's things that she is absolutely phenomenal about. She absolutely loves vocabulary. Anytime we use a word that she doesn't know, she grabs it. She wants to know what it means. She adds it to her vocabulary. Uh, but we always did struggle with math. Math was always a, a great difficulty. Um, a lot of these, these things in the Equipping Minds has helped us with that. Um, I, I will say one, one thing that kind of hybrid what she taught and then what we had to bring in our own. Um, a lot of times what you're taught or what you do with, with uh, students when you're teaching them something is a two, three, four, five step process. We're going to do step one, then we're going to do step two, step three, step four. What we found out with Rose, and then it actually turned out to be, again, when I was in the classroom, I'd always make my classrooms very friendly for special needs students. I had several students uh, in ROTC that were special needs. Um, and what we found out is particularly with them is that in their system, they didn't need to go step one, step two, step three, step four. What they need to do is step one, step one, step one, step one. When we had that figured, then we do step one, step two. And you kind of saw that with this yeah. Joe Miller Fillmore book. And say, so this, and, and I can't tell you how much we fought that because yeah. uh, that's the way you teach things. That's the way I would teach things. It, it, and, and it wasn't working. Okay? And so sometimes you got to look at that and what it worked was, okay, we're going to do step one until it just becomes rote. Mm -hmm. It just is an, an instinct. Every time we see one uh, divided by five parentheses, two plus three. Okay. We ignore all that. We go inside the parentheses and we do the first, uh, first mm -hmm. function. Okay. Well, boom. That's boom, boom, boom. Right. We, and we do that until it becomes, okay. And then we figure out what's step two. And then we do step one, step two, step one. And, mm -hmm. But we don't jump ahead to three, four, five until they've got those nailed down. And once we did that, um, she does very, very well on that. But it, like I said, it's it's a, a willingness to go through that. Like I said, she came out. Now we're in the process. We've moved back to this area. We're actually across the river. We're uh, technically not in Kentucky anymore, but a little bit uh, on the north side of the river over by Louisville. Um, and so now we're going through the, the waiver uh, programs, things like that. She's getting her into vocational rehab. Um, but she was in North Carolina before we came up here to tell you how far she progressed. She was admitted on her own uh, uh, own academic background into the community college. Okay, so she had. Now that being said, that was also right during COVID. Uh, and one, the other thing that I will say, um, and if there's a blanket statement that I'll make, this will be it. Um, special needs kids absolutely don't. Uh, Zoom is fun. Zoom is you know. They need the full spectrum, the hands-on, the uh, whatever you want to call it, you know, tactile learning, different type of thing. They've got to have that. A lot of their learning is relational. It's spatial. Okay. They can use, you, you've seen perfect evidence that you can use a lot of intellectual brain power stuff going on in between the ears, but they're also looking at colors and they're also, they, they, they need a much more comprehensive um, realm to work in. Okay. Mm -hmm. They don't work in just straight, straight lines. Yeah. So. And I love that Kurt said this. And um, so one thing actually on page 169 in your teacher book is teaching math one step at a time, because there was an article by Alberta Costa who happens to have a daughter with Down syndrome. And I read it in the New York times and it said she was doing algebra and I emailed him and said, how, and he said one step at a time. And so exactly what Kurt said. And so we started um, putting that in the workbook and it's the same principles. We circled the bear, then we circled the bear and box the snake. And so we would say, and actually Amy Farr used this for a little bit. Yeah. I don't know if she's still using it, but she would, I would say, just have them do step one. And until they get step one, then do step one. And, two. But it, and then also, to you know, multiple problems that are the same concept right. and just doing that. And, you know, Kurt just, he did, I don't think we, he we even knew it was in here. But it was like, yeah. And, and, and we did, get, yeah. you know, we did get one algebra class passed. Is she ever going to be a, a theoretical mathematician? No. Okay. Um, but she, she passed did, but algebra. As far as, as, far as yeah, she her, passed algebra. Her math credits to say she absolutely loved geometry. 
Okay? Mm-hmm. Because there's something that's got some very, um, like I said, algebra tends to be much more intellectual. Okay, Geometry is, is hands-on. You can draw, you can look at things, you can look at cubes, you can calculate area. I mean, all this, uh, all this rolls together and makes yeah. sense to them. So, Yeah, no, thank you for sharing yeah. that. Well, I just want to say is um, what my dad just said about me doing math is a little hard because I can't really do division that often because when I try to, to divide math problems, it, it can be hard, but I just, just need to do it because division, um, addition, subtraction, and also times are the few math problems that I can do. For the proficiencies, like my dad just said, it's called um, PEMDAS. It means, it stands for Please Excuse My Dear Aunt Sally. Mm-hmm. I use that in, in high school for math. Um, we do our proficiencies first in exponents, then our multiplication, and then for and then for dear is division, and then Sally is, sub, is subtraction. We do our proportions first, and we solve that one first because always um proportions always comes first. You have to work on that one, and then you have to see what's the the answer, and then you move on to the exponents. It means that are the two is above the the number and then you have to solve that one and then, and then you move on and, and math is really easy because you can do all kinds of math like um you, you can learn on your computer or a laptop um we learned about um cnn 10 news we do um cnn 10 news um every morning for the beginning procedure of the school day. And then we watch and we learn from it. And then if you don't know what the questions, um, um, that you don't know the questions from the video, you can always go back and you can just pause and, and listen and for the actual um, um, quizzes, um, if, if you don't know them, um, you can just uh, listen to the, the video and you have to write the question down. And when you listen to the correct answer in the video, then you click on the answer. And when you submit, it, it means you pass or you don't, it's totally fine. Just math is a little hard because I can do math, and in my life back in my high school, I did I different kinds of subjects. I did history, um, um, social studies, and and sometimes I do um, um whole culture. Like I do very well in in whole culture. I learn about different pests, um, different plants, and everything. So. Yep. Yeah. So she was very nervous to come here and talk to everybody too. I was very nervous, but at least I got Miss Carol and my dad. <laughs> my mom will, uh, will come, but she's at work. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Sorry. I just I just want to say I'm I'm so inspired by you, Rose Addison, in terms of uh, you inspire. Uh, you know, we adults, I'll say, speak for myself, you know, we have our struggles too, but both of you have inspired us to look at our own difficulties and be able to say that all our difficulties can be overcome with intention. And my most, uh, you know, my most memorable from this conference is when, uh, Rose, you dedicated, you know, your, you know, your dad, and you just expressed your gratitude for your dad. It, I'm a father of two young daughters and it, it touched my heart it teared me up to see to see how you see the 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 attention that um, uh, you, the how you've seen how your parents have been there for you 
and even uh, just an Amy, the amount of effort you take, it's so it's so wonderful to see how you have uh, you know dedicated yourself to find in creative ways for you know Addison to do it. That's why people are asking, what's your background? Because you know the lens that you went to in order to see uh, you know the way that you have just met Addison where he needs to be just shows that, you know, as parents, we can do a lot for our children. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for your advice. Mm -hmm. And I see you, both of you, continue to inspire many, many more uh, people, just not just children and adults. So keep at it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Any other questions? I mean, I'm just tearing up because, um, yeah, I've never. I think this was worth the price of the conference a million times over, just this in and of itself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just really hard to move from your old home into a new place to live because it could be very hard. And I know it's, it is mm -hmm. emotional, but it just needs to be happy. With when God sees you, he sees kindness and truth. And what he does is to help you to get through what, whatever problems you're going through. Because I know it's hard, but for everyone that's out there with Down syndrome or being in a new place, this is hard. But I have two best parents to help me to get through what, what I'm going through, which I miss North Carolina so much. I miss my best friend, Joanna. It's just yep. hard, so, yeah. Well said, right? <laughs> I just I just want to thank you guys. Uh, my name is Linda, and I, I see a lot of courage in the room there. Yeah. yeah. A lot of courage. And I'm just, uh, I appreciate you all very much for being there and sharing and um, and being a, a, a torch for the rest of us. And well done. I know, well I, done. Shared with, I know I shared with you all that um, working with Rose showed me um, what God could do through equipping minds because she did make those unprecedented gains and, um, and so I was just so thrilled when they moved back and to be able to see her, this beautiful, articulate young lady, because um, I've known her for 13 years. <laughs> so uh, when she was just seven years old when I met her. And um, so she is actually in her, you can't see all of it. Those here can she now Addison is in his school uniform. And um, Rose, we just stand up because okay. you just look um, super, professional. super professional. This is Rose's business casual. Step over, just here a little bit, sweetie. Beautiful suit and everything, and so just you know. Yeah, um, um, it was made for, for a for a job interview, but it's just. I really want to wear this because I know being in a conference is everything to Miss Carol. So <laughs> I had to wait for her because she liked my outfit and I really like hers. Thank you, Rose. Oh, okay. I would, and y'all would probably be fine if I kept them here the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. And, um, but um, we're gonna, um, Carol. Yes, Amy. Real quick. I absolutely. Just, I just want to say, like, as I'm, I'm just a mom, and as a mom, um, when if you're anything like me, you can look at this curriculum and go, "Holy mackerel! <laughs> Where do I even begin? There's no way I can do any of this." And I just want to encourage you: just take the first step. Just start. It doesn't even matter what you start with. Because what happens is you start small and you build on that and you keep building and then you're going to get an idea and there's something that pop in your head and you're going to go, oh, I made that connection. I can use these cubes for 
yeah, this over here, you know, and that's, so I just want to encourage you because I, I know for me, I got this information and I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's no way, you know, and then I was blown away by a, how quickly he picked up on, on it and then starting small and only using what he knew and not assuming he knew everything, but just starting with the basics with what he knew. And just, so I would just encourage you just take that first step, just start. It doesn't matter what you start with. And that's the important thing, because once you start, you're creating that momentum. Once that momentum gets going, it'll pick up and then Mm -hmm. you'll just, you'll do more. And I just, I, I can't say enough about this program and the difference that it makes, because I really believe that it has enabled Addison to stay connected at school. Mm. It has enabled him to pursue, you know, marching band, which I never even thought was an option. You know, I didn't. And, and our philosophy as parents is being the youngest of five, he just kind of does whatever the rest of us do. So, which is good, you know what, that's a good thing, but um, I, I don't know what God's potential is for him. And so I don't ever want to put a ceiling on that. Mm -hmm. And so the more that I can find creative ways in anything, whether it's music or it's theater or it's, well, we don't, we don't do visual arts, but that's definitely not my forte, but if we did, I know you could incorporate this, you know? And um, so I just, I just want, I just want you to hear like from a mom, just be encouraged, you know, start small, don't, don't let it overwhelm you. Just pick, pick one thing for us. We started with blink because he knew his numbers. He knew his colors. He knew his shapes. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, we can do this. <laughs> and we worked online together. Yep, Rose, and, Rose and I, of course, started out working in person Yeah. Um, for the first few years and then did a little online when she moved to North Carolina. Yeah. When I moved to North Carolina, I did, um, Zoom class with my um, teachers and my classmates. Um, I know it's a little hard to um, keep up, but doing Zoom is a really great way to do with my teachers and my class of, of how I can do that. Yeah. So... And we had yeah. done Zoom, so you yeah. had some practice before Actually, that. Actually, that was a yeah. huge yeah. benefit. That was a huge help for us when, when COVID hit because right. um, I was talking to Carol and all of a sudden everybody was freaking out because we were going to online classes and such. And, and yeah, that's harder and it is way harder, um, yeah. I think, for them to stay engaged. And I think that's true for like most of us. <laughs> but um, but fortunately, <laughs> fortunately, <laughs> Because he had already been Zooming with Carol, at mm-hmm. least that was familiar for him. So even that was, that was yeah. I felt like a, a blessing. Is there anything that you want to say or share or tell them? No. He's a man of your words. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for having us. Oh, no. I mean, I told you all this was <laughs> going to be a special session, right? So um, we're going to, um, you know, take just a second. Um, Let me go ahead and end this session.